Good morning, gentlemen. Good morning. How you doing? Oh, doing well, doing well. Good, good. How about you, Sorry, Hank? I'm... Long time no see. Yeah, I know it has been. I took a, I I took a very deliberate two weeks off of everything, um, and needed it to be honest with you. So probably needed more. But... I'd I'd like to hear more about that if you if you'd be willing to share. Sure. At some point, happy to. Hey, Jerry. Hey, Hank. How you doing? Good. I'm good. I'm liking the. I don't really know. Is that a goatee? Is that a soul patch? Is it a? Is it a what? It's not a soul it's a, patch. It's a goat patch. Okay, goat patch. All right. Somewhere between a soul patch and a goatee. I hear you. Yeah. And, I have and one too. It's just everywhere. Do you know the story behind this? Uh, no, but I'm oh, I'm all ears. Yeah, uh, as Ross Perot so famously said, um, which may be too which may be too old a reference for everybody. <laughs> no, I. I got gotcha. you. Oh, good, 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 good. <laughs> and bringing it out. Yeah, and then and then in a fit of self awareness, he went, "Heh." He got yeah. he <laughs> got that he was being funny about himself. Like it's a small moment of humanity for Ross Perot. So two days before the election, I, I, like the weekend before the election, I hadn't shaved, and on Tuesday oh, yeah. election day, I was like, "Oh crap, this is going to take a while to sort out." So I decided mm -hmm. not to shave until Trump was off stage. And then a couple of days later, he mistakenly or something tweeted, you know, President-elect Biden. And then, oops, I didn't mean that. But then I shaved like all of this off. But I left a full goatee. And then, and then, you know, as events have gone, I've been like whittling down pieces of the beard. So I'm left right. with left with this. And in principle, uh, on inauguration day, the rest of it goes away. Although I'm kind of liking it a little bit. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> Different. And it seems yeah, like I mean, pandemic is a good time to play with facial hair. So there we are. Yeah, man. Just don't don't let it define you. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And, and it turns and I and I've realized in my life that I look terrible with a full beard. This is not awful. It's not you know it's it's something. Yeah, it makes you look distinguished. Oh, thanks. I yeah, I'll li I'll listen a little more closely. Yeah. Perfect. <laughs> and and in particular, if I do this, it's like, well, yeah, I don't right. know about that. I think we should you know try something different. And then everybody mm -hmm. like, must follow the goat beard thing. Mm. Happy New Year, everybody. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Yeah. Happy New Year. We're now in it. Oh, cool. Thanks, Scott. So um, I just pasted that in just for just for grants. I found that this morning. I had never heard of WEIRD before uh -huh. as, the ac as the acronym for Western Educated Industrialized Rich Democratic. Uh -huh. And this article, I thought, connected to some of your talking about how we the, the summary is that, that, that they said that we used to be in kin-based organizations and that we moved, so that the Western moved into the nuclear family because of religious impositions. And what happened was that changed fundamentally the personalities of, of the two groups. And it's actually a really interesting article, I thought, about how... Um, you know, where, where we talk about how, you know, the, the independence and the individualism of typically the U.S. There, you know, mm -hmm. that's where we're, when, when, when ranked, you know, we're much more independent on an individual basis. But um, what was interesting was that the, the simple example that got me hooked on this was that they had videos of kids. So the teacher would, would put together a bead string in a certain order of a certain colors. And then they had one child who would put it together exactly correctly. And then the other child matching the, what the teacher had done. And the other child put it together in a different pattern. And they said, which child is smarter? And non-Western said the ones who did it exactly like the teacher. And Western said, the other, the one who didn't do it like the teacher. And when asked why, they said, well, because creative individualists are smarter. And so it was just a fascinating, and I don't know, I just think it's a great read um, oh on, on how your culture can fundamentally change your, your thinking. 
So love that. And then I think a lot of us have been tracking a bunch of things like that, a bunch of forces like that for, for a long time. This one sounds really good. Hey Judy, hey Charles. Uh, yeah, so, link to the Charles. book that Scott referenced. <clears throat> it's the link in the chat to the book Scott referenced. Yeah. It's a, yes, it's, it's a it's an article and we should repaste it into the chat because Judy logged on after. Oh, I got it. I got it. Oh, you've got it. Oh, good. Perfect. I just got it. Thank you. Yeah. Excellent. Good morning, everyone. From good morning, everyone. Temporarily, at least sunny Minnesota. <laughs> yeah. Today and tomorrow promise to be intriguing days politically. Yes. Um, yeah, the controversial superior wharf hypothesis, which seems to bounce up and down all the time. Um, in terms of steering OGM, uh, several things. Uh, Pete and I are involved in a couple different things that are kind of not ready for prime time yet, but will be good about steering and building stuff for OGM, one of which is a directory of who's who and what we're up to and all of that uh, in collaboration with Vincent. Um, and another one of which is the Free Jury's Brain Initiative, which uh, is turning into an export of my brain that we will be able to let people play with. Um, and we're, we're busy right now figuring out, okay, what, what do we say? How do we explain this? Like, we'll, we'll need an explainer video for, for people coming in and, and, and all of that. So that, that should be ready. I, I'm thinking in a week or so, uh, we should probably be ready to, to have an, a broader OGM call that says, hey, uh, here's some assets, here's some stuff to do, uh, and here's where we're going. So that's pretty, that's pretty fun. Um, and the thing that I'm thinking is a good moment to do, um, is not so specific about projects and all that. I think, I think it's maybe a good moment to have a, an after action review of last year in terms of OGM's structure and direction. I don't know if everybody else would be up for that, but, but I, think, I think a really nice use of our time would be um, uh, sort of sitting down and, and kind of honestly looking at what OGM is and could be. Pete? Um, I, I, I like that. Um, I'd also like us to reflect a tiny bit on um, on our communication tools and platforms. Cool, which I think is part of an assessment of where we are. Charles? I would just put a plug in for, for something on roles, touching on roles, um, probably also guilds and, and with the reference to your posted video. Um, Lauren, I think is expected and um, we can chime in at least just, just briefly just to, to update because there's a bunch of stuff. And I apologize that I haven't had a chance to look at what you posted to the Mattermost, but it looks super oh, intriguing. So. And I'm sorry I wasn't on yesterday's um, calls yesterday. I couldn't, couldn't do the oh, time. That's cool. Um, that's why we wrap and uh, keep the arms open. <laughs> awesome. Do you Thank prefer you. us to be in Mattermost or chat today? Mattermost. Yay. Woohoo. Mattermost? Let's try to chat in Mattermost. Uh, okay. Although Pete is taking good notes and. The, uh, so the, the, the way it works is um, somebody in authority um, or somebody who's leading the call should say, let's not use any Zoom chat. So the, the thing isn't where should we be, it's where shouldn't we be. Or where, should we be, at this, where should we be for this instance? Because, because we can chat in the chat here and then copy paste it into the matter most. But nah. that doesn't really work well because Pete's head is nodding left and right. <laughs> um, uh, if if you want people in Mattermost, you have to say, please close your Zoom chat. And then you'll have more room to see people, which is the thing that you want. Shall we do that? Yeah. Everybody here on Mattermost? Good? Good. OK, I'm closing my Zoom chat. Painful though, it may, though it may seem. It's a new year, a new era. My Zoom chat. Ah, God, I don't know how to do that. OK, which means I should probably make this window smaller. I don't, now I don't know how to chat and see everybody at the same time. So this is, it's awkward, but there we are. This same, more or less the same screen real estate. Can you, are you gonna paste what was in the other chat into matter mode? Yes, I will. Great, thanks Pete. Cool, okay. Personal side note. That's the CSD. Personal side note. Personal side note. Oh, sorry, Judy, go ahead. I just wanna confirm CSC Agora is the right matter most. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Like you have more than that, Judy. And, there, and there's a channel, and there's a channel in there named Steering uh, Steering Tuesdays. Oh, and I was sitting in Town Square. Ah, you want to be in Steering Tuesday? Yeah, I just moved. Perfect. 
So this could be hearsay, but I, I um, checked again on my my laptop uh, crashing situation, and it, it, it looks like there's a solution, but I haven't tried it yet. So um, whatever, <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> Sending you laptop mojo. Thank you. I had a moment of total panic yesterday because my my main workbook pro computer was totally black and had no charge. And I plugged it, it made sure the connections were okay and it didn't seem to be recharging very fast. So it must've been really drained, but it came back, thankfully. But I'm gonna have to find a better system. <laughs> uh, in one of the last things I managed to do before lockdown, luckily, um, a colleague noticed that my keyboard was bowed on my, on my iPad. Uh, so iPad, no, on my um, MacBook Pro. It's an older MacBook Pro. And it wasn't quite, it wasn't quite closing. It would, there would be like a little gap when I closed and so forth. And um, I looked it up and it's like, holy crap, the battery is like starting to expand. Explode, yeah. So I basically uh, went into Apple, I'm way, way past warranty, but it didn't cost that much. They replaced that. They also replaced the keyboard, I think at the time. And I got it back right as lockdown happened, meaning it was sort of the last day to sort of walk in and pick up a device after that the door was closed. It was amazing timing. Um, that must have been pretty a, terrifying. Yeah, well, I, I, I think I didn't know how terrifying it was because I didn't realize that 42 weeks later, we'd be still hanging out here in lockdown, even though stores are more, more or less open. But I think Apple's stores are closed again now. I don't know what the, what the deal is. Depends on states, I think. Yeah, um, and everybody's having a bad time. I, I'm a fan of sumo wrestling for some crazy reason. And Hakuho, uh, who is the top Yokozuna, the top sumo wrestler in the world, has tested positive for COVID. And you can only imagine who all he's been practicing with and how that all, it's crazy stuff. Yeah. And then I, just, it, it, I was ahead. supposed to have a meeting Thursday with the science nonprofit that I work with on a national level. And the woman who's co-chairing this committee with me texted and said, sorry, I was out of touch. I was taking Paige, her daughter for COVID testing, um, hoping for the best. And then when I texted back and said, do you still want to chat tonight or whatever, it was, uh, no, that's tomorrow. I have a runny nose, hoping. Uh-oh. Yeah. And so I'm thinking, okay, so now I'm going to end up be chair of the committee because she won't be able to come on, which is a minor thing. But I'm worried for her and her family and how, however many other people she may have had contact with. And I'm just sitting thinking, is this the new strain, the new, uh, Pete, does this feel like a run through the population? I mean... It feels yeah. like suddenly, suddenly it's there's more reach. It's yeah, it's going to be huge. It's yeah. super scary. Um, a lot more asymptomatic transmission. Yeah, and more cases means more deaths. Yeah. Um, so somebody who just did a very simple mathematical model, and so I even hesitate to say it, but he's like, okay, so if you just do the math, after like two months, it's five five times as many deaths with the new new strain compared to the old strain. It's bad news. But we are getting better at keeping people from dying once they get COVID. Isn't the mortality rate going down? Only slightly. Yeah, probably. But the the real the real headline is we can't we can't figure out how to stop transmission in the U.S. We just you know. Oh, we're, we're idiots. Culturally not able to. So we're well, not the only ones. But it's, it's not. Kind it's of not the Western world. But, but, but it's the not other, even that we're culturally unable. Really Sorry, is, Jay, go ahead. Well, I just think the other really serious thing that they're not talking about because it's too scary is that beds are out, they're out of beds in hospitals, just about mm -hmm. everywhere. And so now oxygen in LA. They're not really? getting enough ventilation. They're rationing oxygen in LA. And all of those things. And so wow. there's gonna be a cascade of failure in the medical delivery system that is going to be shocking <laughs> and really sad because they, they just, they can't deal with that many people. And all of the individuals who are being cavalier um, are wasted in a sense because there's such a large segment of the population that I don't know. It's just frustrating. They were warned. Yeah. It's really sad. It's very scary and very sad. I mean, it was wonderful to have my daughter here for the holidays. We could only do it safety because she works in a medical research institute. She's tested weekly for COVID, and she had already had two negative tests after returning from seeing for the first time her partner who's in California, hadn't seen him since February, mm. they were sequestered there. And she was super careful with all the precautions, but she had to have a couple negative tests before she would come here, 
-hmm. because I'm her elderly mother, you know? mm -hmm. and I'm fine so far. We're all fine, but I'm being more stringent than just about anybody I know. And having a, a bit of a background in science and all probably helps with that. Yeah, it does. <laughs> I mean, it's, but it's also very restrictive and I'm getting yeah. pretty custom to Zoom and it works reasonably well. It doesn't pick up all the, the warmth and tone of people in the same way that you would if you're sitting across the table from them, even at six feet. Yep. Kind of, for, for your, sure. your aura doesn't reach me through the computer. <laughs> we need oh, that on. next. But it's just, I'm, I'm <laughs> really worried about the crashing of the medical care system because I think that's going to happen and that's going to yeah. create a lot of craziness in the U.S. where people are used to having a fairly unassailable medical care system. Um, and Scott are, and Charles? Go ahead. Sorry. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Scott and Charles. Um, I had heard, you know, some opinions that said, look, we're all just going to get this. And that's just eventually, that's just how it's going to go. And that's been something I've been trying to struggle with is this idea that can you really like push it off just mm -hmm. by staying away? Or is it just the fact that, that this is going to ripple through and eventually over the course of years, this is going to, this is going to get, get to everyone with varying results. And I, I don't know. It's just a thought. I don't have any basis for that. Um, Charles, then Pete. Um, I, I wasn't uh, raising my hand, but since I'm on, um, I think we could we could easily spend um, you know the whole year talking about all this stuff. Mm -hmm. But um, what about OGM and steering? And do we want to just sort of get into gear? I like that. <laughs> Um, Pete, last word on that. Uh, I, I wanted to respond to Scott's thing. It, the yeah, that's what the I trick is we can get vaccinated before everybody gets it. Right. Um, it'll become endemic in the in the future years. You know, everyone's either going to be everyone's going to be immune more or less. You'll either get COVID or hopefully you'll get a vaccine. The the main thing that we're trying to do is to keep everybody from getting COVID in the next six months, which you know, if that happens, like the deaths are like 10x or 20x or something what they should be because, you know, you'll, you can't go to the hospital. You can't go to the hospital even if you don't have COVID, you know, if you break a leg or if you have a heart attack or, you know. So um, it's, it's going to become endemic and we're going to live with it forever. But it's, it's like people say, like some people say, it's you know, in the scope, grand scope of things, it's not a horrible disease. Um, and thank God for that, because otherwise we'd be totally screwed. But, um, but it's horrible if we're, if nobody has it, then everybody has it all at once. So that's what we're trying to avoid. Okay, let's take a little breather and turn to our little, our little fledgling organization. I will just add, um... Uh, you know, Kiko Lab has done, and we're kind of year, coming around at some point s sooner than later to, to, to focusing more on this stuff. Corona wisdom being the broader container, uh, Coronavation being a, a project that we that, that's, that's sort of been dormant, sitting off back back burner. So, um, cool. I've got to get a bigger screen or something like that. The flipping back and forth is hard on me, uh, in particular because I'm trying to catch um, uh, body language as I as I take notes and stuff like that. So we got to figure that out. Um, I'd be interested maybe in starting a reflection with uh, maybe Pete on our platforms and Charles, if you wouldn't mind reporting in on what you've just been talking about on roles and, and all that from a kind of a retrospective critique perspective. Um, I think those would be useful. And then, and then I'd like to go and just sort of say what I, you know, where, where I think the, the state of the state of us is. So Pete, if you want to start. Um, yeah, sure. Com communications. Yeah. Um, it's funny. I'm not sure that, well, I've, I've got a bias to this, which, so that, that's fine. I, so I acknowledge my bias in, in kind of trying to push us uh, into 
um, uncomfortable, but I think more productive communication modes. Um, uh, OGM forum, I think, has been going along pretty well. Um, and we had the start of a forum facilitation team. Um, a few people were interested in doing that uh, at the end of last year. Um, Jerry, I think you're going to kind of pick that up uh, this year and, and get a little bit more done. The, the forum has been, I think it's been successful. It's still kind of low volume. It's still kind of hard to use. Uh, it's not organized as well as it should be. Um, and it and it needs, um, it, it needs a, a firm but light touch kind of to keep it, you know, kind of within the guardrails and pruned up and things like that. There's um, the, the, the good news is the tool helps you uh, with a lot of that, but the other news is that somebody actually has to do some work to, to keep it kind of going forward. So Jerry's got some ideas. Um, the forum facilitation team has got some ideas. Um, so uh, nothing, not a lot of big progress there yet, but we'll see it soon. Um, uh, I think um, Mattermost is working really well. Um, uh, it's, I, I think ev everybody in our local federation neighborhood kind of needs to grow into the ideas of what these different organizations do and how they're different and what the membranes look like and when it's not a membrane or it's a membrane easy to cross and when it's, you know, a little bit more firm. Um, uh, so some of the organizations involved, OGM, Kiko Lab, and and CSC right now all have very permissive, you know, membership structure and very open and we kind of just float slosh back and forth, um, which is great. It's working great. Um, when we're a little bit more scale, we'll probably have to start having a little bit more understanding of, you know, what it is to, to be this or to be that or to be both things together. Um, Mattermost, I think, has been mostly a success. Um, it's still kind of low volume. Um, uh, but people are, are picking it up and it's easy enough to use. Um, the mailing list uh, has kind of gone up and down. Um, uh, we, you know, we were really hard. Uh, we were all in it and then we kind of moved, started moving some stuff over to OGM forum and that's been reasonably successful. We've had some discussions on the mailing list about let's not use it as much. Let's try to move over to the forum. Um, we've had some really productive discussions in the last couple of weeks. Um, I think part of that is that we're not trying to have too many discussions at once. Um, the mailing list gets clogged super fast. Um, so kind of it's so it feels to me like we're still kind of in the early stages. Uh, we're still trying to get our acts together. Um, it's great to see this team say, let's just close the, the Zoom chat and move over to Mattermost. Um, I think we'll grow into that more and more as we as we continue. Um, uh, quick tech technical kind of thing. Actually, both systems need system upgrades, not desperately right now. But um, uh, I'm the guy who runs the back end of um, uh, Discourse and Mattermost, um, and I'm going to need to take them down maybe this weekend or something like that for half an hour each and get them back up and. Um, I have like a, you know, a 0.1% chance that everything's going to go haywire and it's going to be down. Something will be down for two days and that's, you know, it strikes fear in my heart and stuff like that. Not that I'm going to communicate that to everybody. It's going to be like, yeah, routine thing. It's going to be down for half an hour. I'll be back up. No big deal. Um, that's almost certainly what's going to happen. Um, but, you know, I have to, I have to like get mentally prepped and also technically prepped to make mm -hmm. sure that we recover well from that. It's not like a Slack outage nationwide. <laughs> that the Slack outage makes me feel lots better at this point. Mm -hmm. um, and Even if it makes you feel better for my forgiveness in advance. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. I appreciate it, Hank. Um, uh, Jerry might talk more or might not um, about another set of affiliated organizations that um, that is interested in communication infrastructure for its its federation of stuff. Um, we're, we're talking with them about Mattermost um, and they're deciding between Mattermost and Slack. And because they've got some existing Slack usage, it might actually make more sense for them to use Slack. But, but at least we're in conversation with them and helping them think through stuff. And that process will help us think through stuff better, so. And also, um, that's an interesting thing to fold in of the organizations Lionsburg and the Fellows Jordan. 
uh, who is attracting a constellation of different entities, kind of like us, but different from us, but smaller orgs that are all interested in the steward ownership model. And this is not retrospective, it's more prospective, but what, what the decisions we make on uh, infrastructure and all that have broader repercussions because I think we could look forward, yay, Lauren, um, we could look forward uh, maybe uh, in a couple months to actually having these platforms uh, live or be populated with many more orgs and many more humans uh, doing things. And so the, the idea of how this scales and how we sort of stay in touch through the connections really matters. Um, second small thing, I was just trying to figure out what to do about my Mattermost and I found a little button that says tile Mattermost to right side of screen. And I pressed that button and I got an iPad style half screen thing where I now have chat eating up the full right side of my screen, but there's a little bar so I can make it larger or smaller. And I have all of our gallery view on the left and this is perfect. So I look around, look around and goof with it, but I, I can now see everybody and take notes in the matter most instead of the chat. And this is actually um, like, there's little I would do to improve this layout. This is actually really quite good. What the button you click That's on? what I just, yeah, that's just what I, I put in there. I'm doing the same thing on a desktop computer where I closed my chat window and just put my new Mattermost browser window in the exact same spot, same size, and it feels like I'm typing in the chat. It's, I love it. Which button did you click to get the Mattermost in the chat mode? I'm not positive. Can someone find it and describe it? Because I don't want to hit undo here. If you, if you just make the Mattermost window narrower, um, it drops off all the channel stuff and puts it in a, in a little three bar menu. Okay. Yes, but this actually was a little command. It said tile left, tile right, and go for yeah. the windows. And the tiling actually made my chat fit perfectly. I don't have to mess with, with Zoom. It's actually lovely on the left. And we're all, and we're, I'm full screen on both right now. And I don't, and I'm afraid to go to browser and see what happens. What, so what's, if I go to browser, what operating system are you on? I'm back. I'm on Mac OS latest rev. Actually, I haven't upgraded the, the OS to, um, to the most recent because there were controversies about it. So anyway, it's working fine. So I just wanted to report that. I'm not good at that tiling thing on my Mac. I, I use a different tool, but, yeah. um, uh, real quick, before we leave communications, if I could talk about something that's adjacent, now that I can't see my Zoom. Um, uh, uh, we've also got, um, even with the folks on this call, we're starting to get more Airtable usage uh, for various things. Um, Airtable is going to be underneath the directory stuff that uh, Jerry and Vincent and I are working on. Um, we're also starting to use it kind of um, uh, early early days of using it for various kinds of project management, internal project management. But um, I think it, it would it would behoove. Uh, maybe that's the wrong way to put it, but it would be a, it wouldn't be a bad thing if OGM um, started using Airtable more and did more internal mentoring with Airtable, which I'm totally down for. Um, so uh, and and especially for one of those things can be both managing a portfolio of projects and then also managing tasks for any one project. So it doesn't have to be Airtable, but it's a good, it's a good thing for a lot. Uh, Hank, Hank, does, um, does Collective Next use Airtable or Coda or something like that? No. So we actually use um, Miro for a lot of our like project management type stuff. Um, and I think some of that comes from just a penchant for more visually appealing <laughs> presentations of things um and just you know uh, and again not to not to drive this nail too too deep into the wood here but um you know some of it is just trying to keep our own you know in our 30 person organization our tool ecosystem pretty light um so we're just kind of trying to use you know one thing for as many things as we can um you know personally i've used airtable for 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 some things and i, and I like it a lot um so um you know, I'm excited to see it used here, but yeah, from a from a organizational perspective, it's it's not something that that we've jumped on. Cool. So we'll we'll be we'll be using it and seeing it more, I think, uh, in several different ways. Um, and so we're not done with retrospective on communication tools. I mean, I, I would love to hear other people's reflections on on our platforms. <clears throat> I'm I, I'm pretty comfortable with Mattermost, and I like the 
the structure and so forth, but it isn't an overwhelming volume yet. I really don't feel like I have my arms around discourse. Like every time I dip in, I feel like I'm barely like ladling water out of the river. And I feel like there's a, like, the, like the Amazon river is right there and I'm afraid to dip in further. Cause I don't, I don't have my, I don't have a routine where I know I've covered <clears throat> what's in the discourse forum. And that's my fault for not having uh, spent enough time in there and really got worked through it. But also my MO when I hit things that require thoughtful replies is to slow down. And that makes doing things harder because there's important questions being asked there and so forth. And then questions that probably ought to be in the discourse forum are being asked on the mailing list right now. And those require thoughtful replies. So Harmjit has put three or four things on the mailing list that, uh, that I'm like, oh, okay, this, it's really important I handle this well, we handle this well. Mm -hmm. uh, because there's a bunch of sort of anti-vax kind of stuff, you know, lurking around here, and how OGM works with that is really important. Like a, a piece of who we are and what we do is about bridging those conversations and having those conversations. So I'm a little stuck there, and I should have maybe sort of asked for help in in some way, but I don't actually know how to ask for help around that issue in what we're doing. So I so I kind of answered Parmjit's one message by 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 opening the issue a little bit. Uh, and we need to go back into that. But I would love to, to I would love to um, shepherd those conversations probably into a discourse forum that is for that topic. That way it doesn't clutter the, the, the list. That way it's not, you know, interfaces everywhere else, but we can, we can, but we're welcoming to it. And we say, hey, those kinds of questions we put over here. And I think once it's fenced a little bit, we can then sort of dedicate our attention to it more appropriately. Scott? Um, I'm, I generally have a model like Kank where I limit, try to limit the number of tools, but I'm also trying to follow Pete's suggestion to say, let's use the tools that we've chosen. So um, I have found no issues using the tools. The challenge for me is remembering to go to them. Mm -hmm. And that's really the, the thing that once I'm in Mattermost or discourse, I okay, I understand what I'm doing here. I understand how to find things and, and move them around and connect and all that. But what I don't do is remember, oh, you know what? I need to go check Telegram to see if Charles and Lauren sent anything. I need to check, because I'm not one who likes to have all of my notifications coming at me just mm -hmm. because there's too many. So yeah. I, I prefer to go in and look, but then I don't, the more tools I have, the more chance that I can forget to look there. Exactly. So that's usually, just my perspective. And I usually turn off desktop notifications so I don't have things flicking on the upper side of the screen all the time, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, Judy, go ahead. Well, I was just wondering, because I'm kind of like Scott, I'm willing to learn all the new tools and it's kind of exciting, but keeping them all straight and getting the right notifications is challenging and you don't get notifications for some of them. I wonder if it would be feasible for us to have a communication hub where the center point is the hub and there's spokes and they go to the different, there's a direct link to the latest version of the various forums that we're using. That could be an OGM landing page where then you can choose to go to Discourse or Mattermost or Miro or whatever and, and follow what's there. So the simplest version of something like that that could work is something I was working on on the revamp of the openglobalmind.com website, which was a Google Doc with the current status of where are we, what, what tools are we using and how do you get on them? Where are they? Just having a page of that would I think be helpful. That's, I don't think that's anywhere near having a communication hub where you know you've, what, you've caught, got notification from whatever's going on. That's a different matter altogether, but we don't even have a place to send people that says, mm -hmm. hey, Here's the full panoply of things that we're that we're using, and here's how to you know what we've put where. I was maybe I'm oversimplifying to the difficult, but I was hoping that there was a way to have an OGM landing page, which then allows you to go to. It could have links to the different the hubs with a direct link, so yeah. you don't really once you once you've loaded it to your machine. You don't need to remember, here's how I get to mirror, here's how I get to these other places. Yes. You just click on that box and you're in at the latest point of entry. And if you want to back up or maybe there's a sub web in there where you can go to education, finance, uh, community outreach, whatever our, our projects or tasks are. 
initiatives maybe is a better word because I think they're going to keep going. <laughs> um, go ahead, Pete. I think I'm not muted, right? <laughs> yes, we can hear you. Um, uh, I, we've had in a, in a couple places, we've had people um, talking about uh, I, two related things for me. Um, one of them is just a just a homepage, more of a homepage. Jerry, my proposal would actually be, I think there's a, a, a few people who would be good uh, homepage maintainers. Mm -hmm. um, so what I'd like to suggest um, is actually popping it out of Google Sites and moving it into, I'm going to say a bunch of tech gobbledygook, I apologize, um, moving it into a static site generator that a few people can maintain easily. Um, that lives and, where? Uh, lives, uh, which, which part? Wait, uh, well, how, how so it would leave from a link to it. Uh, I think it should be, um, you know, uh, open global mind.com. Um, so, um, so hand over, uh, open global mind.com, um, to, uh, a small team of homepage, uh, homepage maintainers is my suggestion. Um, and then put things like the communication hub there. The other thing to put there is the onboarding stuff. Uh, another thing that's been bubbling along that we get uh, regular suggestions about is the onboarding process. Um, right now, the way that we're, OGM is set up, uh, you can get into the Mattermost and then be doing OGM stuff without being an OGM member, more or less. Uh, you can kind of do that with the forum. Um, and then there are people, conversely, who get into the mailing list who never get onboarded into the forum or Mattermost with you know any regularity. Um, I just, Steven Kreutzer, um, one of our blessed friends um, uh, in the in our federation, uh, just this morning said, yo, Pete, new, new guy came in. Um, I shot him my list <laughs> of sister organizations that OGM has because that's one of the things that you want when you join OGM. And I hope that was OK. And I'm like, Stefan, you know, go for it. But his point was, you know, maybe we could systematize that instead of hoping that Stefan is the, the person who, you know, who happens sure. to help and, this, this person. And my hope is that Airtable actually becomes a piece of that. I agree. So <clears throat> I mean, so that, that should live in Airtable. That should easily live in Airtable. So two suggestions. One of them is to hand over the keys to openglobalmind.com. Um, and another suggestion is to uh, have, an, have, have a, another committee project quest, um, whatever that works on onboarding process. Can you just do a quick recap of your tools, Pete, the ones that your your favorite tools for what we want to use? Not not explaining them, just so I make sure my list is complete. Um, sure. Uh, let, me, let me interrupt myself by saying that no, actually, no, let me let me not do that. Um, so all we have are the mailing list, Mattermost, uh, and the forum right now. Well, what about your team? Uh, we also uh, have someday Google we'll group. have. Well, we also have a Google group, and we that's have, the mailing list. Uh, oh, okay, sorry. Uh, we have our Google sites for the website, which we're not using very much. Yeah. It's just sort of an outside face. We have a couple other things going on. Uh, we have. Airtable is going to be the enabler. There's Pardon? a LinkedIn group. There is a LinkedIn group, but we, we, I, I don't even count that because I started it, but nobody's ever really posted much there. So I, I, I still consider there's potential there. So I think so too. Right? I, I, Which I one? Have Twitter there. and all that kind of stuff. LinkedIn, I, I created an open global mind a group in LinkedIn. So there's a place there. And the idea was that if we talked in public on LinkedIn, we would easily attract a lot more people. Yeah, that's true. There are also uh, private groups we, we could do there. If, if we the, could, yeah. but I would think that being in LinkedIn, it would be really, really, really uh, great to have open conversations there because uh, we'd, we'd find a whole lot of people attracted to what we're talking about, I think. Mm -hmm. It's a great idea. Um, uh, to, go ahead. to Judy's Airtable air point, um, we'll, we won't everybody well lots of people should have fun with Airtable because it's a super fun tool the 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 way that we'll do that for most people or the group is we'll say we'll have a directory we have a directory of people and projects um we have you know other directories of stuff sister sister organizations 
and those a lot of those will be tied in Airtable. Some of them will actually be Vincent and I are already working on magic to make it so you don't see the Airtable part. You just see a form and, and a web page. So so will Mattermost replace discourse or Mattermost and discourse are complementary. Um, and if you pick one, it should be Mattermost. Um, and if you want to have deeper, richer conversations, you should pick discourse. No, I want to do both, so that's okay. And, 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 but Matt, and Mattermost is Collective Sense Commons, not OGM per se. A, 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 yes, both an important point and hopefully an unimportant point. Right. Hey, yeah, but they're not equivalent, it's my point. Yeah. Yeah, it does say CSC. <laughs> Um, and CSC is sort of a hosting entity and over time there should be channels from Lionsburg, there should be channels from other partner, other partner organizations, etc. So as we wander up and down the chat, it can sort of change between organizations that you're communicating with. That's, that feels like where, where that's headed. You know, since you mentioned that, I'd like to, to jump in and, and mention that there are a handful, a small handful now of Kiko Lab channels. Um, and not to get into it now, I think we have other things to, to cover. Um, um, and I, I, I'm thinking out loud, it's going to be more for the forum for discourse to build out um, topic areas, or I don't know how to term them, but um, for the Corona wisdom that I mentioned earlier, for example, which is not specifically Kiko Lab thing, that's a real bridge area for OGM and Kiko Lab, for example. Um, but just thinking out loud, like you, you mentioned, um, the Linesburg, for example, coming in and maybe having some channels, then like, how, with the way that the channel menu architecture is set up on Mattermost, I don't know at what point it'll start to get cluttered with and, and chaotic, you know, quickly. So Relatively that's just a thought I've been like. having. What's that? Relatively soon, it feels like. Yeah, I know. And so I don't, so then I'm not sure that Mattermost is really set up for that properly, what we're talking about, or what do you think, Pete? Is a quick answer. Maybe for we, that. I, so I feel the opposite way. I feel like it's not going to get overwhelmed for literally like a year. <laughs> um, I, I hope that it does in the next couple of months. I would love that. Um, the, I think the really short answer is even on this server, um, there's a thing called Teams. Right now we're all in Agora, um, but it would be easy and and also caution flag warning, let's think about this before we do it. It would be easy to set up um, a for instance, a Kiko Lab team and an OGM team. Okay, got it. So um, that's the next, the next stage and level. If, if, as yeah, I, I, I think it's something to approach with caution. And, and, and I have more of a, my horse in this race is actually, the, for this particular thing, it's, it's the tech more than the sociality. But um, I hope there are people who start to think about the sociality of of uh, CSC or a commons or the federation that we're all in or the OGM's Kiko Lab partnership or whatever. But the sociality of that says that the better, you know, the, the more that we're, even like right now we have channels that are, you know, that we can easily bump into each other but they're also separated. It's a magic of virtual space, right? It's like we're, you can be in the Kiko Lab Community Center and the OGM Community Center, and it turns out they're actually also the same thing. And you know, you can think either way, and that's a that's a good thing. So, the more that we say, okay, let's actually forcibly separate things, you know, it it's going to lead to channel confusion and stuff like that. I think the main thing, yeah, thank you. I actually I agree, and I like that. Um, uh, maybe last thing on this for now is it just comes back to the the, the likely and soon potential cluttering and, and sort of chaotic overwhelm of the channel menu itself. And so how to keep that kind of tidy enough, consistent labeling and so forth. I think that's that's going to be really key to making that work. Yeah. For, for what it's worth, I've uh, I went through this with Frontline Foods early last year. Um, uh, it was a dynamic organization with 900 people running all through Slack. Um, we had probably a hundred channels or something like that. Um, mm -hmm. And the marketing team didn't, didn't know or care that there was also a tech team and they didn't know or care that there was an also an ops team. It, it works out pretty well with, with Slack and with Mattermost. So I, the, the, the key to that actually was um, one genius who was an ex Slack person and she did an amazing job of 
and it's funny it was really hard to even tell what she was doing because it was so subtle wow. you know and so like oh of course it works that way but anyway you know she kept all the noise down to a, not even a dull roar like you didn't notice it was you know it was noise it was just perfect so i'm i think we can do that um i don't think it needs genius level stuff even though i might ask her for help so a meta comment here um I just wrote it in the chat to remind myself. So we're busy exploring the future of collaboration and curation. That's part of what we're doing as OGM. And what I mean by the future of collaboration is uh, part of the reason Lionsburg and the constellation of companies and Chico Lab and us and CSC is that we think, we think and here I'm, I'm using a general we, assuming that most of us sort of feel this way, um, we think that there's a new way for companies to work together and for people to federate into companies that isn't monolithic corporations with private IP and their own data centers, uh, each sort of competing or whatever in, in, a, in a traditional market, but rather uh, these sort of federations of organizations and individuals working across them with portfolio careers uh, who are busy sh creating shared assets, et cetera, et cetera. So there's that layer of collaboration uh, uh, at the communication level. And then here we are in a pandemic and the best resource sharing tools appear to be Google Sheets and Google Docs. And uh, like, they, like there's an insane number of really good sort of people who've done, who've used very primitive tools to try to share information out. And we're still, and, and we're sort of now kind of moving into, okay, we're gonna use Airtable and try to figure this out. We're in a way primitive state somehow for the shared curation of what we know mm -hmm. and how we remember it and where it is. And for me, I'm just really frustrated how primitive this all still feels and how chaotic it all still feels at both levels, at the, at the community and, co and conversation level and at the where did I put this and where does it belong and how do we share it out level. I'm just really like kind of mind, I'm, I'm, I'm what's the word gobsmacked is the good British word for this that, that, that is still at that, that, that kind of state. And, and isn't I'm, it beautiful? We can be at the cutting edge. And it's okay. Well, that's what it feels. That's what it feels like we're doing, which is awesome, and I love that. But we're way deep into this revolution, and it's still this like chaotic and messy and inchoate. And I think I think five years from now we'll be using a tool suite that feels different and is considerably different and is somehow more intuitive and better. Um, and maybe from oh, yeah. my lips to God's ears. Um, <clears throat> but but it's just like the moment we're in is like jesus have we not made progress go ahead pete um i think i have three things i'll try to remember them uh on on that exact topic when i feel like that when i felt like that in you know 1990 whatever right. um i i think of doug engelbart um who was in the same place you know until he died having invented the technology and seen all of the, the ways to do it and what to do in 1960, whatever, right? So thank God we're not Doug, Doug Engelbart because we'd be like a hundred or a thousand times more frustrated. Um, it's, there's another, another thing that's frustrating if you think about it. Usenet was better than anything that we have now. Um, there are a couple of tools. IRC is better than anything we have now. Um, we have this weird regression thing where the tools actually get worse as they they spread out and get mass adoption and there's it's really hard to build them back up to the the power of usenet or the power of irc it's this freaky um uh second thing um one of one of the things that we can do to help all of this uh, adoption uh, as we go through this is certainly calls like this where we check in on the status of it at kind of a high level um, another thing that we can do is have semi-regular calls, you know, every two weeks or every four weeks or something like that, where um, maybe it takes over a Thursday call, maybe it doesn't, maybe it's a separate call, where we have um, kind of a little tour and a little how-to of, you know, here's here's how the forum works and here's, you know, when I need to, to have a, you know, a deep talk about something, you know, here's how I go find stuff in it. and. If we do that, uh, so I, I don't mean that just as a as a kind of a, a, it's not like a webinar thing. It's more like a participatory ex, uh, exercise where it's like, okay, now we're going to play with the idea of, you know, getting stuff into Mattermost or into the forum or whatever. And this is how it works. Let's have a little bit of the discussion. Let's start some topics in the forum 
and and then discuss them live or something like that. So that reminds me also that we should just um, do a bunch of screencasts and and uh, videos of you know here's how to use Mattermost, here's how to use uh, the forum. Uh, two more things. One of them, um, first next one, third thing. Um, uh, there ought to be, and I think there will be at some point, better cross cross communication between the tools. So conceptually, it's not that hard to to you know um, make a. And I've even started doing it a little bit. We saw some you know here's what's happening in Mattermost or here's what's happening in the forum, so it's automatically generated and posted to the mailing list. Um, uh, not that I'm for automatic posting. I think that's generally a bad thing. But if if you use the light touch, there, there should also be ways to move things back and forth between, um, you know, Mattermost, we can capture some stuff out of and put it into the forum or post from the forum into Mattermost, things like that. So I think we'll see some of that happening. Um, last thing, uh, OGM deserves a wiki as well as the other tools. Um, so we've stayed away from that because we don't want even more tool confusion. But as we get better at adopting the tools that we've got, we're missing, we're, we're kind of using the form right now and it's not very good for it, um, for memory. Um, and we should double down on it. CSC wants to have a media wiki that's kind of like Mattermost, but a, a wiki instead of a chat. Um, and we can sort of make, debate uh, the different tools a little bit later. Um, one reason I like Google Sites is that it's the old Jotspot, which was at one point a wiki, and that its editing is really brutally simple. The problem is that nobody else is in there with me doing any editing. So I'd love to try to use it as a wiki for a while and see if that works, because it's it's not it's a really simple, elegant tool. And we, Media Wiki is, at this point, an archaic tool. And, and it's probably the best bet on wikis right now, because I wouldn't want to be using FedWiki. I wouldn't want to be using Tiddly. There's a whole bunch of wiki variants, none of which are appealing to me. Um, uh, let so, me throw one one more set of tools in there. The, the yeah. right thing to do nowadays um, for both documentation sites, Markami sites, and, and wikis um, is Markdown and Git and a static site generator. That's state of the art. That's the best thing to do. It's super powerful, super flexible, super um, super common. You can use lots of different flavors of tools. You can pick the flavor tool you want, um, uh, and yet it's still you have to learn Markdown. You have to learn a little bit of Git. Uh, you, know, you have to not freak out about that. So Jerry, I'm totally down for trying uh, sites as long as you and I at least also try. Um, the Git Markdown, well, actually, you and I and a couple other people, um, Markdown Git uh, Static Site Generator, which which replaces and I think is an, an upgrade, even though it's hard for me to say that because I, I need, know I need to figure out how that's possibly an upgrade, but I I, I will I will watch and listen. We we should have that call, and whoever's interested should like let's 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 throw up a, a call where we talk through Static Site Generators and and how this works uh, versus wikis and all that. Let's do that. Gary, can you just repeat which site you were originally talking about where you said you're the only one editing? Um, OpenGlobalMind.com. Oh, I think okay. I'm, the, I'm, I'm the only person who's really sort of worked on it. And I've, I've been stuck. There's a tab open that's been open forever with a revamp of the site that I haven't hit publish on because it's not really done. And uh, I don't have enough brains or brain power or brain time on it. So there should be a homepage committee. Totally. Absolutely. Um, I and think I'd the like basics of... The, the basics of with the discourse link and maybe also the CSC, or, right. you know, because I find myself inviting people every week, a couple of them probably, and, and having to f f find and yeah. fish for these links and tell them where things them. are. Yeah, that should be that should be like right there really easily. Yeah, exactly. I mean, there should be an onboarding page for newbies that says, here's our tools, here's how to get on them. Here's our here's our neighbor communities. Uh, here's links directly to them, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. I agree that onboarding uh, is really important. And it also seems to me that as we start to take on action initiatives, which are in the formative stages everywhere, that we're going to want to encourage, but not maybe force the people in those action teams to continue within the framework that we have so that the knowledge they develop is available without learning whole different systems. So that's part of the 
I don't know, membership agreement or something. Agreed. <laughs> From the standpoint of if we really want collective intelligence, we have to be able to communicate across this ever expanding and more complex network. Agreed. And, that's um, a note, Jerry, that strikes me is like just listening, and I wanted to say this is like part of this whole tech talk was the original reason for Open Global Mind. It was yes. it was to get out of the '60s. It was mm -hmm. it wasn't. I mean, we had higher aspirations, and, and Judy just talked about these quests, what you could do once you got all this knowledge somehow your arms around it, right? Um, so it's just, it's, it's funny. Like, I mean, this is, it feels like we're having a conversation about how do we build this thing so that we can go do other stuff and really building this thing is, is a big part of like why we're together. Um, totally great. Well, and, and, and as we Hold do on, Judy, uh, Hamilton's not well, I did, and just And I wonder, I wonder how, just how much this, you know, I really, Jerry, resonate with how you characterize your struggle with using all the tools and the push versus the pull and the notifications how much it's exacerbated by just like being on Zoom all the time, how much information and not getting out. And like, we don't have our natural filters that are in place just by the different rhythms of our lives. And, and yeah. you know, so as we look to build something that's more sustainable, I don't, I mean, obviously we have to live in the world that's right now. And, and we, we're gonna, this endemic world that's ahead of us is very different, but it feels like it's over. I mean, it's, I don't know. It feels like there's no solution to it right now because it's just so overwhelming, you know? Which is not Thank to be the heatest, but yeah. Uh, Judy and Scott, I, I was just going to reinforce if you well what what Ham is saying because I think that the connectivity of all of this is the heart of OGM, and so we want to be able to have that connectivity, but not everyone who enters it is more than Zoom capable at the outset, and so Pete's suggestion that we offer or refer to existing primers on the various systems we want to use is really helpful because most of us, even people like me, can go listen to a primer and back it up and listen to a section I didn't quite understand a second time and not tie up the talent of a live person mm -hmm. with that unless I get really, really boxed in. And then I can text Pete and say, what do I do? I just jammed up here. <laughs> no, and he'll, he'll text back push these three buttons and then I'm done. Um, there's, but, there's nothing like pause and pause and replay on video. It's like so fabulous. It's, it's really helpful because yeah. you, can, you can stop the flow even if you just need to stop it so you can digest the thought enough. It, it really improves the process. So oh, anyway, before, you're working just, great. Before I pass to Scott, a real quick thing. I rediscovered where the button was that did the funky thing on Mattermost, which is uh, on Win on Microsoft on on Mac OS, uh, each window has three buttons: red, yellow, green. The green is to minimize the screen, uh, and in this case, Mattermost has three different settings: so full screen, tile window left, tile window right. And what I chose was tile window right, which then goes full screen and takes my zoom to the left and makes it just really slick and beautiful. Sorry, I just I just found Thanks. it. So Scott, Thanks. go ahead. Uh, Jerry, so are you talking about, a, is that a Mattermost app? I'm running the Mattermost app. Oh, okay, is, okay, all right, okay. Which is I, the problem I, here. It's not, it's not the Mattermost it, in, a, in a tab. I, I'm using it in a browser with it, it would work in a browser window too, if you just... Yeah, that's so what it's I'm using. A, it's a standard Mac thing. If you just hover over the green button <clears throat> on yeah. any window, you'll get those. Cool. Yeah. It's, a new, okay. it's a new OS feature that I have not grouped yet. Well, also, if you just open its own tab and shrink it, it shrinks down to just the chat window and right sizes it just even that way without any of that. So, yes. Go ahead, I was Scott. Just, uh, oh, Scott, go ahead. Scott, then Charles. Okay. So, uh, my observation here is that I'm looking for a list of OGM affordances for our, our communication channels. And here's, here's what I'm noticing I have two opposing things which I think are interesting. First of all, I went to the Airtable page, opened a new tab, and went to look at that again. And in one of the, um, I don't know, one of the, wow, Airtable is the greatest thing ever. You know, here's how I use it. Uh, things. What they said is, I'm, uh, it's so awesome. Now our team, the very first thing we say is, how can we Airtable this? Okay, so that's that's one side, which says the tool creates the affordance in the sense that, oh, wow, Airtable lets me do these things. So 
So it, it's now, this is great. So now I have this set of affordances that I didn't have before, um, which can be helpful, um, but it also defines what you, what you do. It, it boxes in your thinking in a sense. On the other side, I've, I've observed for years that people don't use Excel as a number calculator. Most of the people I know who use Excel, at least in the marketing department I was in, were making visuals. They were using it because it was a grid based, like they could do, they could do columns and, and rows and, and they could organize their information on a grid and they could put images in there and all of that. And it's, they were using it as a design program in a sense, right? And so they were using it in a way that it wasn't originally designed for. So they had brought their own, they said, oh, I could do this. Well, then, then now that affordance is part of it. I'll give you a sec in, in peak here. So what I'm looking for is if we had a list of affordances and one of the examples is, and I don't know if this is right, I change it in one place and it mirrors in another place, um, you know, and maybe only the owner has the ability to change something. But, but basically it's, it's like, oh, is that something we want? Yes, okay. So what, what tools meet that? Instead of saying, here's a cool tool, here's another cool tool, here's another cool tool. And I, I think the last point I'll make is that the very first thing that I think of when I think of us talking about communication channels is, well, we need a website. Well, we need a forum. Well, we need a chat. Well, that's big. And I, I think that's just because that's just what, what's already there because that's how we think. Oh, okay, well, I know what a forum is, so, so we need one of those. So let's use that because that works well for this. And, and the difficult part is gonna be say, saying, take all of those things out of it and say, what are the affordances we want? And that's the only way we're gonna end up with a new tool. What Scott is saying, yes. Like, I think that's core. If we could just repeat the last minute of what Scott was saying, that would, had, had, that would constantly steer us back into what OGM should be, could be, might be headed toward. Uh, Charles, then Pete. Um, I just had a, a flash just, just before, um, because um, I thought about Pete's um, little 30 second um, animated graphic flowchart thing relating to kind of the sister or sister circles and, and uh, platforms. And I think that could be done that style is, is wonderful um, and I want to learn it, but it also um, could be used exactly for this, um, uh, the OGM tools and their affordances and how they relate and, and sort of also use that, I think, in, in the designing the way forward. But Pete, do you want to share that? Maybe it's, it's so short, it's so it's, wonderful. It's probably easier to go find it in the other channel. Okay. Which, I could probably link that somewhere. Let's see. Okay. Yeah, I could too. The, you have the floor next. Oh, go ahead. Um, so I love that, Scott. And um, I have to tell you, I spend literally 20% of every day thinking through that. You know, what, what affordances does a group like OGM need? Um, and I've spent probably literally 70% of my work time for the last 20 years thinking through exactly that, right? What is a what does a group like OGM need, and how do we get there, and how do we get there most simply? So it might look <laughs> like I'm going, oh, I have this amazing tool that I need to wedge into this uh, social organization somehow. <laughs> it does, at least for some people, for some some amount of their their. Um, but literally, literally, twenty percent of every waking day, I'm thinking through how can we make it so that people can communicate more effectively. And so um, at the beginning of 20 or 25 years ago, when I was thinking through this stuff, it was a lot more like, well, I've got this amazing tool or this amazing technology that people have to use. And this is, you know, you know, I, so I've been disabused of that notion um, by paying customers along with friends and relatives and stuff like that over you know 
I, I now, now I am to the point, I'm old enough and experienced enough and wise enough that what I really try to do, I spend uh, an inordinate amount of that time, the 20% time or the, the 70% time of just trying to figure out the, like, like the minimum stuff to get to the next, you know, the next step, the next perfect place. So the, the tool set that we have, Mattermost and, and Discourse and a wiki if we ever get there and, you know, the mailing list, it's, it's, it's this um, satis satisficing um, between possibilities and resources and the hard technical fact that all the tools suck right now and they're hard to connect and things like that. So even as I'm telling Jerry, dude, the easiest thing to do to replace Google Sites, um, uh, which is which kind of peaked in its applicability and usefulness about 10 years ago, um, the easiest thing to do is to do it a harder way. And you know, and you should be using Markdown and you should be using Git and you should be using a static site generator. This is like an insane thing to do. Jerry is exactly right. Pete, I don't know why you're dra dragging me back to 1992 because I thought it was 2020. I don't know, man. I, you know, if, if I had my druthers, we would literally be using Usenet and IRC and that's all we would need. <laughs> Same with, same with Mark Antoine, right? He's but a, physical. The physical no universe guy. does not work that way. It's the weirdest thing. So, so, and the fun thing. I was, I was, I, I guess I got excited about, about whining. Um, uh, Scott, I have an amazing story about spreadsheets. You said it, people use Excel as layout tools. The guy who invented the spreadsheet, Dan Bricklin literally comes from a, a printing and layout company. That's his, like he grew up in a print shop laying out pages. The way he conceived of a spreadsheet is it's a layout tool, literally. Um, I, I had this conversation with him personally, you know, I'm talking with Dan Bricklin is like, okay, Pete. So the, the real thing is all the spreadsheets today don't work well enough because they're supposed to be layout tools. This was in the context of, uh, my, my wiki company uh, for a while sponsored EtherCalc, uh, which was a collaborative spreadsheet thing. And we were talking about, and he was an advisor and he was trying to tell us, you know, what, what we should do with EtherCalc. Um, so, you know, so I don't know where the, the, I feel like there's a moral to that story that maybe in giving it to Bob Frankston, the guy who programmed the first spreadsheet, maybe Bob said, you know, the important part of this is the numbers or maybe between Bob and Dan, as they presented it to, you know, whoever they presented it to, it's like, cool, I don't need to lay out right now, because <laughs> it was, you know, the 80s or whatever with terminals. But anyway, it's, it's a really fun story that the spreadsheet was actually invented as a layout tool, not a not a calculating engine. I love that. Thank you very much for, for closing that loop, because it started there, and then went to the math, and then kind of, it may have probably forked, but it kind of went back a to lot, the I didn't I didn't know that. Thank you. So we're... 10 minutes past an hour, just about, and we've just been covering uh, communication platforms and tools. And there's a whole bunch of other stuff in, in, a, in terms of a retrospective that I would love to get into, including sort of, uh, and maybe this is for our next call next Tuesday, but I'm feeling like I, I've i been both stimulus to OGM and a bit of a barrier, kind of a, a, a bump in the road for a lot of things we've been trying to do. And I'm trying to figure out you know, how that works and how to optimize my my participation in, in these kinds of things. But I think that's a longer conversation that's not going to happen in the next 15 minutes. Um, and I would love to spend a little bit of, uh, reserve a little bit of time, assuming we're going 90 minutes here uh, for a wrap at the end. Uh, and so maybe what we should do is stay on the communications topic because that leaves us sort of 10 minutes of that uh, and, and see where it takes us. Uh, and, and again, looking back on on what we have. And I think that, um, I think this conversation already has been really fruitful and maybe this is a little bit of the beginning of the wrap because it's, it's causing us to look back on what we've done in a way that for me is making me go, oh, why don't we have like, why don't we just finish the simple thing of there needs to be a landing page that points to our infrastructure, right? And, and like, when I, on, when I onboard people, I add them to the Google group and that I do like boom, 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 boom. And I then have to handwrite a little note into uh, the Google group 
ad, admin ad page. And I, I just say, hey, I announced things on this list, you know, look, look on this list for news. And I don't, I don't, I should be giving them a link that says, hey, here's an onboarding page, go start here. Right. And we should have an onboarding team, an onboarding page, and a page that links all the different things. And that's pretty easy to do. But that immediately calls up the question of, oh, where does that page live? And because I'm sort of doing Google sites, blah, 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 that's kind of where I would hope it would live. And so we have to have this other conversation about, well, what in fact uh, is powering openglobalwine.com, et cetera, et cetera. So these things are all linked in Tumbly, but I think I'm getting some clarity a bit on, on some aspect of, of how to approach this. Go ahead, Scott. So my takeaway from this session has been, I think the tools that we should look at are tools that haven't been developed yet. And also tools that have been around for so long that we've discarded them like IRC and things like that. And it seems interesting that, that both of those directions are fruitful and that we shouldn't discard the idea of, well, those are, you know, email's what, 50 years old now, you know, and it's still here. What does that mean? Is that good or bad? Don't know, but, but I think that there's things that don't exist yet and things that worked in the past instead of being too locked into what's, what's status quo at the moment. Um, small note before I pass it to Charles. Um, so I did the Yitan podcast for nine years and we had an IRC chat on that all the time. Mm -hmm. And Yitan was a blend of my crowd, my people and uh, Pip Coburn's people who were hedge fund managers and money people. And none and uh, practically zero of the, of Pip's crowd made it ever onto the IRC. The IRC turned out to be just our community talking to ourselves. In a fruitful, I loved our chats. Our chats were awesome, but but it was really funny because the IRC, the, the, the use of IRC turned out to be this, this incredible litmus test for, for sort of geekiness. And, and that meant that those people weren't in that conversation at all, which is pretty funky. Um, go ahead, Charles. Um. <clears throat> Couple of things on uh, uh, Scott, what you were. Um, uh, it's like I don't know. I don't. I, I'm having a bit of a. There, there's two main things. One is um, a big. Um, no, I'll, I'll start with the positive one. I'm sitting on a lot of research that's not fresh, but I've done a number of these exact kind of deep dives into tools and collaboration tools and what's in, and even on spreadsheets. Yeah. And um, uh, I mean, using spreadsheet for all this kind of stuff. Um, it's endless. Uh, so maybe some of what I have, it, it could be useful and I'm glad to dig it up and bring it, bring it forward. Um, but, you know, rabbit hole alert, it, it dark, you know, it's, it's like a black hole, uh, potentially. It's like, so I don't know. Um, I agree. We don't want, just want to go with the status quo and we need to get the hell off Google and, and so forth in my view, but, and Zoom and, and so forth, but, but here we are. And yeah, how do we actually operate and function and move forward and all of that, do that dance. So I just want to say you're like, I mean, Scott, I, I, I've been there <laughs> and um, I, you know, with some groups and teams and, and you know, done some significant work and sort of making sense out of all that. And it's a, it's a, it, the um, landscape is shifting all the time too. It's like evolving so fast. By the time you sort of make such a, an assessment, then it's already different. So there you go. Um, and I, I love that, Charles. And, and, and I just, you, you struck a thought for me. I think the Fordance's list is the bridge between what used to work and what doesn't exist yet. And as the tools change, the affordances shouldn't. Maybe we don't. The affordances change less than the tools, and so, so as long as we keep focus, I don't know that, that. We don't need to reinvent that wheel. We can probably Google or whatever right away and bring up a bunch of useful stuff. But go ahead. Um, two things. Uh, one, I, I want to offer Pete maybe a way to sell me um, static site generation. Uh, and GitHub and all that, which is something I've been saying, which is that why don't our tools talk to distributed linked open data? And so the deconstruction of where the nodule, the nuggets of goodness live is I think part of the infrastructure that you're talking about. It's just that the nuggets happen to be in damned markdown uh, living on GitHub, but 
that becomes sort of the new distributed OS for where the pieces are that then get reconstructed or reconstituted into some arbitrary set of new architectures that have, that look like a blog, that look like a wiki, that look, that smell like something else. So, and, and this is a vision I felt a really long time ago that I'm like really on board on. It's just that it, like, I can't stand how some of these things look right now. Um, but I think the path toward what Scott is describing about a new suite of tools is probably down that avenue. Um, I, I, think, I think that that's a, a really fruitful path to pursue and we should be experimenting on the leading edge of those things instead of maybe, so, and, and here I don't really know, but in, instead of maybe doing things like uh, building a really nice discourse site that has a tool that's pretty mature, that is a threaded discussion tool or whatever else. And maybe because discourse is open source, right? So maybe, maybe part of our task is at some point in the future to mess with discourse in ways that meld it with other kinds of tools. That's really interesting. And, and discourse has a feature that tries to be a wiki kind of thing, but isn't, and we're, 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 we can't figure, if we could troubleshoot that for discourse and offer the discourse you know, developers, hey, could you try this and this, and then, and then we be lab rats for it? That'd be really interesting. And that would be very OGM-y sort of thing. And then a separate, a separate thing I'll just add, uh, which is, for me, I'm on Zoom calls all the time. And then for a third of the Zoom calls I'm in, which I'm hosting, I then get a thing that says, hey, your recording is ready to download. I then download it and then upload it to, to YouTube. And then in YouTube, I do minimal editing. I just add a title and stuff like that because editing takes a huge amount of time. Um, Lauren, I'm, my hat's off to you for the, the amount of editing that you do all the time to produce beautiful videos. Um, and then pointing to a moment that happened in a call uh, like when Scott a moment ago said what I said, we should just sort of play this over and over again. Like just, just referencing that moment as a bookmark in a media event that would be easy to get to is almost impossible to do. No, no, like, no, it's not though. It's not though, but it is. And so, so when, Google, when Google Plus came out and Hangouts first came out and all those things and, and Google Hangouts on air first came out, I was like, oh, this is awesome because I can be in a multi-person video conference using Hangouts on air that is automatically recorded to YouTube and I can decide whether to make it private or public just by, by flipping a bit. And then the feature that was missing was tap a little button on the interface to bookmark things that you want to go back to and remember and tag up. And then those tags could become direct URLs, direct links into um, the different places that significant things happen in the conversation. And all of a sudden we sort of got pretty easy links back into notable things that got said. Right, but 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 the way this is working, it's like 400 kinds of work to get to something that would be really useful and would be a big improvement on on discourse. So, uh, does that make sense? Uh, Pete, go ahead. You're muted. And you're muted again. Now you're muted on your own. That was funny. Um, Laura uh, doubled over. As um, as you were describing, maybe we could sand off the rough edges or or morph discourse and Mattermost and stuff like that. I that's a big part of the reason why I chose discourse and Mattermost. They're open source. They, they both talk Markdown. Um, uh, that's you know that's where I'm going. Um, uh, I. Um, I don't know how to say this without feeling like I'm, I'm being mean. <laughs> Scott, um, I, I love your enthusiasm and, and of course, um, not just me, but tens of thousands of people, <laughs> tens of thousands of people have spent literally since 1960, whatever, inventing those tools. Our implementation and especially distribution of tools is lagging behind like 20 years or something like that. So. I, I, I admire your, I, I love your, I love your enthusiasm about, dude, I think we've got it. All we have to do is think about it a little bit differently and invent new tools. There's a whole bunch of tools, just like Jerry has been, you know, Jerry, Jerry just kind of went through, if we took discourse and mashed up Mattermost and hooked in Zoom, stuff like that, people have, I mean, literally thousands of, tens of thousands probably of, of PhD students have written theses over the past 40 years, you know, uh, pointing the direction towards that. So, so 
I'm super excited to have you dive in on that. And there's a bunch of existing work that, that we can be inspired by. I don't think that we have to follow it necessarily. I, I, and, you know, um, but anyway, um, there's a, there's a bunch of work already, already thought through. Isn't that a problem I've heard recently though, that, that translating that research, that, that exceptional work into actual, like that I had heard was a bridge. Discovery at first. Um, I, I agree with Pete that we have that we know to a certain degree what what the affordances are, what the things are, how the best way to do this. We just haven't been able to get it out in a real way. And maybe that's just because the general public is slow to adopt. My own it's... take on this, having watched it for a while, is that um, the tech world uh, kind of works in step functions of progress, um, which which, you know, my first real job in the world was at Mobile Oil. I was a rate clerk. I got to go to an EDI conference toward the end of my tenure there, electronic data interchange. Uh, before there were PCs and all those things sort of easily permeated everywhere. And then later I watched as e-commerce showed up and then later I watched as XML showed up. And then more recently, there's a whole bunch of other things that have elaborated on that. And, and each of these sort of plateaus for, for almost a decade, not quite. Um, and I think that we're at the same sort of stage with the tools we're talking about where we used to have finger and IRC and grep and awk and, uh, and said and a couple other things, um, which were insanely powerful, but completely geeky. Like you really had to master a geek vocabulary to use them. Now we have like, I'm looking at bit, you know, bitmap displays and blah, blah, blah. Um, and we still can't figure out what, what to put where, but, but then you have to every now and then use beginner's mind to forget about what you know and reconstitute it. And that's very hard to do. So Pete has been picking tools with a bias toward open tools we can mess with, but we've been stuck on just getting into the tools. We haven't gotten anywhere near that little band of, hey, let's propose an experiment because this and this can turn to this. And so my fear is that as we use conventional tools, we'll get stuck in conventional thinking about the tools because the human tends to adapt to the, to the situation and the tool. And we're like, okay, I'll figure out how to scratch myself behind the left shoulder blade using my right pinky because that's what I've got to do. And so, and so somehow we need to limber ourselves up to get to beginner's mind and then experiment more and more often. And then I'll add one other thing. I think I mentioned here a long time ago in OGM, not on these Tuesday calls, um, an idea I had for an editor that sort of floats above everything. I called it Linkito. And I, and I experimented with this a little bit, but I just described this thing to David Weinberger, who is a friend of ours, who's a co one of the four authors of the Clue Train Manifesto, but also I kind of- I love David. So David is a, a, a hidden programmer. He loves to geek around. And so I described this to him and he said, do you mind if I sort of try this out? And so he went and mocked up a couple of pages with, with a generated HTML that did whatever that lets you edit. Um, but the idea was um, that the only difference between uh, an email message and a web page, for example, is that uh, if you think that you're talking Markdown or, or that like I'm, I'm skinning it down to Markdown now, but if Markdown is your common language, then the only real difference between an email message and a web page is that one of them says, who do I send this to? And the other one goes, where do I put it? that the rest of the page is really roughly the same. There is a context and there's a language and there's a series of traditions about what email looks like and so forth, but there isn't that much other difference. And then the difference between a wiki page and a PowerPoint slide is that one, you know, for me, and, and so this was part of a second experiment I did with Kenneth Tyler at SeedWiki to take SeedWiki and turn it into a PowerPoint killer and into a weblog. And the way to do that was just with playlist pages and, and doing those exercises limbered me up to think very differently about what the future of PowerPoint might look like, what the future of weblogs looks like, and how all these pieces might fit together. But I almost never get back to thinking about those things because we're always in the onboarding and filtering and shepherding stage of trying to figure out how the hell to have these, these conversations, right? So, so how do we get to the breakthrough stage where we actually sort of bounce into the next way of doing this all together? And sorry, I just told like five stories way too quickly, so they probably didn't make sense. Um, but I'm trying to keep us, uh, I'm trying to keep up. <laughs> yeah. I'm I, trying to keep us from, from bouncing over the time. So a, a key blocker or something, a, a key challenge is, is adoption, social adoption. So, um, technical tools are hard to adopt anyway, but when it's social adoption, it, you know, it, 
you know, I can be using the coolest tool ever, but to chat or whatever. But if all of my friends aren't there, then it doesn't matter, right? And what was cool to me when I was writing for Esther in the 90s in, in New York was the first time I climbed on a bus and I heard somebody say, hey, you know, I am that to me. Yeah. And, and a couple of years before that, the first time I saw a URL on the side of a bus. Yeah. And I was like, oh, okay, this is this is now entered the common vocabulary. We are now using, you know, instant messenger. And, and nobody spent a dime in marketing the original uh, I am the original buddy lists. Uh, ICQ, AOL, Messenger, you know, all of those, nobody spent a dime marketing them because they were so damn useful and contagious. And I, I was thrilled when they just ate the world. Okay, good. That, that was a sign of, so, of usefulness and social, social needs, social contagion of the kind Peaches described. These other tools are harder. And now that we're using sort of a mix of them, it's even harder because the overlap between Mattermost and Discourse to me is a bit of a mind breaker because I just don't remember where the hell that thread happened. And I'm not, and I have no capacity to search both tools, right? But you do. Um, well, you do I, but we don't have the same tabs in Mattermost to link. I don't, know how, I don't know how to search Mattermost, uh, what's inside of a private Mattermost uh, thread and what's inside of Discourse Forum uh, through Google, through where? Uh, through the, the, through Google, there's, anyway. a, there's a little magnifying glass on, on the right, upper right of both of them. Oh, that, but that, but I would have to search each tool. Yeah, that's true. No, no, no. There's no, there's no unified. Unless, uh, I, unless we in, I invent a. I can't make the tour of six platforms to search on a topic to figure out where the hell that conversation happened. I cannot do that, right? Very and that's true. a that's a that's a deal breaker for me. That's a that, that's a really hard thing. So sorry, I've just eaten a bunch of our rap time. Let's do let's uh, let's sing and rap for the last five minutes. Well, oh, oh, oh. I was about to say something though. Five minutes ago, if you can remember, Charles, what you were going to say. Yeah, I'm sorry. Oh, was I? Uh, <laughs> it's a good one. I, I'm not sure. I mean, we're just about to run out of time here. I, I think I'm, I, you know, I'm still excited uh, for Lauren and, and me to update somehow at some point soonish. Maybe Jerry, when you get a chance to tune in, um, there's some cool stuff. You know, there's more to say. I think. Um, I, I could say a little bit now, but maybe that's not the time. Let's wrap and, and, up. And also Judy and Scott. You, what, you've, what you've learned in that. There's some really interesting stuff happening in all these different arenas. And I don't know if they're all getting connected so that everyone knows what's happening in those different areas. Because there's some good thought work being done on teams and process and roles and tasks and things that are executional that I think fit under this, but the communication support for it is primary because then once we have communication capability, it'll be much easier to share all of this knowledge with everybody else. So I think it's right to focus on getting the communication stuff straight first um, because then it will help connect all the other work that's going on. And I think that's a completely appropriate conversation for our Thursday check-in calls. I think that that's a really good place to say, there's, there's all these things, we need to weave threads between them, but here's, here's the, the array of things that seem to be moving forward and how, you know, how they relate. So let's, let's start talking that way on this Thursday's call. Anything else reflecting on? The year. Pardon? Good way to kick off the year. Indeed. Lauren? I think, um, oh, go ahead, Lauren. I didn't see. Oh, there was a lot of communication stuff. Can we just remember, most important to me, at, at least, can we just get a few lines on the website it, before we do like website redesign or anything like that? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You could just put all the links to discourse in the meeting yes. we had, like the matter most, just Thank you. You know, 10 minutes done so we have that that's so yeah on the, on the on the chat here in mattermost i posted a google doc link that anybody with the link can edit the doc to a doc that i was embedding on the site uh, that is a list of where we're talking about what and uh, i haven't touched that doc in a month or two so it's not up to date but it was it, the intention of that page was to do exactly to be a directory to here's where what's where and click on this link and it'll take you to that one and you can get an account and log in but, but like a simple button or two or three with, you know, here's the main forum. Boom. I think we can do that too, that's easy. Oh, who's doing that when? Um, when did you put that up, Jerry? The, 
So there's oh, a link back through Mattermost. <laughs> yeah, there's a link in the Mattermost. If you look back on a, at eight at eight a.m. Uh, Pacific. Okay. So uh, exactly the timestamp eight a.m. I put up a Google Doc, and the whole thing is snapshotted in the chat. So if you scroll up, you'll see it. Okay. Or, or back back on. Yeah, I mean, it, it came up, but I, maybe I missed what if if there was a conclusion. Jerry, you wanted more um, collaboration on the Google site. So yes. then someone else, it doesn't have to be you to do that uh, five to 10 minutes of just putting those links on there. Exactly. No, I, I gave everybody okay. added privileges to that doc and I'm happy to add anybody to the Google site to edit also to go make changes. I, I need to push publish on the changes I've made where I took what's on the homepage right now and put it on a back page and said, here's, the, here's our old explanations of, of OGM but I don't have a beautiful front page explanation of OGM at this point, which is why I haven't actually hit republish, but I'm creating a page for free Jerry's brain where we can actually route people toward, you know, what's happening there. Uh, and there should be a landing page for newbies, which um, is not quite the document I just shared with everybody. I think it's, that's too complicated for newbies the way it is right now. Go ahead, Scott. Um, okay, so I would like to offer an appreciation for Pete and his iceberg because every time you start to remind me that, yeah, I thought about that. <laughs> I know you only see this, but, but all of this is underpinning that. And I think the appreciation for your satisficing, which is a word that I think I learned from you, I'm not sure, is, is uh, unfortunately invisible. You know, graphic design, do a great design of a sign system, and it works because you don't even realize that you got to where you wanted to go, right? So anyway, um, I, every time you tell your stories, I understand more about why we are where we are. And I, I think that makes me a little more receptive and appreciative and not so, well, why aren't we like this? <laughs> Thank you, Scott. Put that in the profile. Any other words in I conclusion? We have, I just we have want run to run out of <laughs> <laughs> oh. We do this. Uh... Ooh, we do a virtual group hug of everybody. I mean, this is just. High five, uh, slapping the that, side. That, <laughs> um, that reminded me of something I wanted to say earlier. And this is exactly <laughs> perfect for this. So, so what I've been trying to do, you, you know, if you're a lead singer in a band, in a concert stadium, you have to, you know, you can't you can't make little movements. You gotta you gotta be huge because you're just tiny, right? And what I've been trying to do, you know, Pete, you're talking about something, so I'm I'm doing this, you know, or I'm, you know, <laughs> well, <laughs> yeah. And, but I'm trying to make it like I'm trying to overact, if you will, because I think it's really interesting to like. Jerry, you know, when, when I was doing this, I don't know if you noticed it, Jerry, but, but when I went like this, after about 30 seconds, you moved in and went like this. And it was really this wonderful posture where, where Pete is talking and there's people who are indicating, I'm right here. I'm not looking at something else. I'm not, you know, I'm, I'm with you, keep going. You know, and I, I just think that that's something I've been trying to do more of and watching all of you do this and, you know, it just, it feels more connected in a way. Thank you for that, Scott. Um, and one day we shall meet in person once we've defeated it the Rebel so Alliance. No, 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 we are the Rebel Alliance, damn it. We are. Once we've Agreed. defeated the evil empire, that's it, that's <laughs> it. Get the script straight, damn it. <laughs> um, cool, thank you for a great call. This has been super helpful. Um, uh, more, in the, more in the matter most as we go and uh, see, uh, see you most of you on Thursday. Yeah, take care everybody. Yeah. Thanks Have all. Thanks all.